In today's video, you're gonna learn how to make custom camera animations using Signal in Cinema 4D. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, bringing you the tools, training, and tutorials to help make you a better motion designer. So today's video is all about using the Signal Camera Animation Rig. Now if you don't already have it, you can download it down in the description here on YouTube, or if you're watching on Grayscale Gorilla, we'll have a link there as well. Now in the first part of this video, I'm gonna show you how to use this camera rig so that you can start animating with it right away. And in the second part of the video, I'm gonna show you how I built this animation rig from scratch using Cinema 4D and Signal. So without further ado, let's get into Cinema 4D and let's get animating with Signal. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D. We have this really simple scene set up. The logo itself is animating using uh, one of the transform type presets. And we have other videos on that we could link up down below. But in this video, I wanted to focus on signal. And in particular, this camera rig that I've been using for cases just like this, where I have a logo or a title that I want to animate. And I set up this signal camera rig because it handles 90% of the camera moves I use in this situation. So first off, let's show you how it's how it's working, how it's running, and how you can use it in your own setup. Uh, and then later in the video, I'm gonna show you how to build your own. Now, if you don't wanna build your own, you could just go down in the description and download this rig directly from us. And if you have Signal, it'll just work for you right away. Okay, so let's get going on how this is set up. First of all is the orbit. Now, something to keep in mind is that this rig is designed to always look at the center point of the rig. So just above that, if you want to move the main null, everything will follow uh, along with it. So if you want the logo to end up a little bit high in the scene, you could just move that down and now the entire animation will play a little bit differently. So in this case, I want it dead center. I want it right in the middle of that letter. That's how you set it up. Now next is the first uh, null that we have uh, signal running on and in this case it's controlling the rotation and this is the main orbit this is why the uh, camera comes in from the left a little bit and this is where if you want to change it it's really easy to change it so you in this case maybe you don't want the camera coming in from the left you want it coming in from the right just change that to something more like positive 90 and now the camera is coming in from the opposite side uh, if you want it to come in from the top or bottom you could zero that out and we can go back toward the beginning and say, okay, what if it comes in kind of negative 90, uh, which is coming in from the top? Well, now we have a complete, let's go back to the beginning. We have a completely different animation where a camera comes in from the top and of course, again, from the bottom. So in this case, whew, way from the bottom. And you could even add in rotation effects where it's kind of canting in like this. And uh, don't forget that you can combine all these, right? So you have a, a unique way of kind of animating in and if you want it to go faster, you could say set the set, set the end animation frame to something shorter if you want it faster or longer if you want it longer. And don't forget that this curve is controlling this animation. Okay, so like, uh, let's just jump into the next one and uh, let's just zero all these out so we could talk about one at a time. The dolly is really the main pullback of this animation. You can see the camera starts really close and then zooms out. And this is all from this uh, position signal on the dolly. And again, because we're using signal, we could just tweak these uh, numbers here and get totally different animations. If, if we wanted it to zoom in, we could reverse these numbers. Um, but in this case, what if I wanted the signal logo to be a lot smaller? Well, I could just zoom out here and say, by the time you get to frame 50, I want you way out here. And this will be a much more dramatic pullback animation. Boom. Okay, and that's your dolly, right? You can choose where it starts as well. Maybe it's starting too close to the logo. You can have it start from a little bit further away. And now you're controlling that. Uh, and then of course you bring in your rotation there. So let's talk about the last one, which is drift. Now, if we just turn drift off, you can see what drift is doing is it's uh, controlling the camera animation after the whole move is over. And I always like to have a little bit of drift on my camera, which just means the camera is never resting and the camera is never standing still. And so I made this addition to the camera rig uh, for this uh, case in particular. You can see the logo just stops at frame you know, 70 or so, uh, or I'm sorry, on frame 50 or so, because it's uh, based on this number, it's just gonna stop the move back. I want this 
uh, camera to continue to drift. And that's what this one does. So if you want more drift, you could just turn up the strength or you can set this to a, uh, a more negative number, which just means it's gonna drift back further and further and faster. And this will allow you to extend your timeline uh, and basically never allow your camera to sit still. Uh, and this is, again, really key in giving your camera some movement. So these, uh, you could also see, by the way, while we're here, this is a linear move, which just means it's set to additive and it will just constantly move and move and move back. So between these three, uh, uh, different signal tags, you can create some very uh, unique and different ways to animate your scene. So let's, again, let's just set up a couple crazy ones here. There's one where we spin around the whole thing. Uh, you know, you may need it, you may not, depending on how crazy your transform animation or your logo animation is, that could be unique as well. Um, so I highly, you know, I highly recommend you download this and play around with it, experiment with these numbers and make some fun camera moves. Now, um, that is if you just wanna download it, play with it, that's totally fine. A lot of us are busy. We just wanna download this thing and get using it. Um, and if that's the case, go down below, download it, and if you have signal, it'll just work right away. Now, in the second part of this video, which we'll get started right now, I wanted to show you how quickly this is to set up. And this is uh, so that you can start to build your own rigs, so that you can start to think about signal in a way um, that I've been doing lately, which is, building rigs for things that I use all the time. And in this case, once I built this rig, I never had to set up this animation sequence again. Um, every time I wanted this animation, I just use this rig and it's all set to go. So let me show you how easy this is to set up. I'm gonna copy and paste transform into a new scene file. And uh, this is just gonna give us something to look at here. It's all just animating with transform. And in this case, I'm gonna build this from scratch. I'm gonna start with a null. I'm gonna call the null uh, the master null. This is just where you're housing all of the other effects. Um, and really quickly, we're just gonna copy and paste that null, make it a child, and build the, the hierarchy. I'm gonna do it again, uh, copy paste, and in this case, drag it in. That's gonna give us three different nulls inside the master. And, uh, oh, we don't want that last one. What we want on top of that is a camera. We want a camera at the very end and make sure they're all children of each other. So it looks like this. So what we have now is the ability to move one null and the rest of them come with it, including the camera. So if we look through this camera uh, and we move the master null, the camera comes with it. That's what we want. Okay, so let's now take the camera and zero it out. We want zero, zero, zero. Uh, we want to keep the scale at one, but zero all the rotation out. And what this means is if we undo the camera, the camera's just sitting here with the rest of the nulls uh, just waiting to be animated. Okay, so now how do we, how do we get this thing uh, animating, right? Well, we have to apply signal to each one of these nulls and then tell them what to do over time. And again, we only have to do this once. And once we do, we could use this rig over and over again. So let's call this first one orbit. Let's call this second null uh, dolly. This will be our zoom back. And this third one will be the drift. And uh, in the orbits case, we're gonna add a signal tag and we're gonna uh, copy and paste this signal tag down just by holding down command and dragging it on top of all three of these nulls. And in the orbits case, uh, the orbit, you want it to control the rotation and the dolly null is the position and not just the whole position, just Z position, boom. And in the drifts case, it's only Z position as well. And that's it. Signal is set up and applied correctly to all these tags. And your camera will be going wherever all these uh, nulls go. Your camera will follow along with it. So now we have to set up our signal to animate the way that we want. First of all, uh, we have to you know, pull our, our uh, spline down to tell signal that we want this to animate. Over time, it's gonna follow this curve. And where do we want it to go? Well, we want it to start, just like we did before, at something like negative 90. And then over time, we want it to uh, end up kind of facing the logo, okay? And let's go ahead and uh, change our curve. Not this easy, this, this curve right now is kind of an ease out, ease in, really uh, smooth curve. What I want this camera to do instead is really jump off the starting line. And I'm gonna do that by grabbing this, um, uh, selector here, this handle, and just moving it up and making more of an exponential curve. And now you can see that the camera is going really fast and then easing into his final position. 
okay? And uh, let's speed this up too, and let's get it to its final position by about frame 50. And we're gonna do something similar with our dolly. In fact, our dolly, if we look through our camera, our camera's just kind of moving and rotating around and it's way too close to our logo. What we want the dolly to do is zoom out. So I'm just gonna pull this number way back. And this is what this uh, second curve is gonna do. It's gonna zoom out from our logo. And uh, in, the, in the same way that we did with our orbit, we want it to really take off. We want it to really get a jump start right off the, fin right off the start line and then ease into its final place. And there we go. Now that's kind of too far back. So I'm gonna drop this down to something like 1500, boom. And already it's looking more like the, the example I showed you the final version. Um, and this is how easy it is to set up. Now, the final thing we have to do is set up our drift. Now, what drift does, like we talked about earlier, is give you that sense that the camera is always moving. And I love that feeling in 3D. Um, whenever you have this still camera with a still logo, you're, after all this fun animation, your body's just kind of like, is that it? Is it stuck? You know, add a little bit of variation, a little bit of drift, um, really kind of sets apart your camera moves. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna use not a curve, I'm gonna use a linear curve. So I'm just gonna select both of our um, keyframes here. I'm gonna right click and go to our spline presets and say linear. And now I'm gonna set how far back I want this to drift. And right now it's, it's working great, boom. Now the only thing I wanna add to this is I want to add a um, this playback right here. I want it to set this to additive. And what this allows this curve to do is continue to move. No matter how long our timeline is now, this drift pattern will always apply to our camera. So uh, if you change this to 90 frames, let's say, and extended your timeline, this drift will make sure that the camera is constantly moving no matter what you do. And if you wanna tone it down, you could use something like the strength slider, or you can just reduce the amount of maximum uh, drift that you have set up. Now, the last thing we'll do here is just make sure it's centered on our scene. The master null is kind of too far down. And again, because it's all hierarchical, we could just move this up, and now we're flinging in exactly where we were, and now we could experiment and play around with all these settings and get different camera moves. So. You know, I encourage you to play around with this. And again, think about using Signal in a different way, not just one parameter at a time, but really the ability to build rigs uh, and the ability to, you know, um, anytime that you have an animation that you do over and over again for different clients or for the same client, think about setting these things up because they've been saving me a lot of time lately. And so I hope this video does the same for you. If you end up rendering anything or using this rig, I would love to see it. So make sure you hit us up in the comments below. Thanks again for watching everybody. And if you end up making your own rigs using Signal, we always love seeing the creativity of our customers and how they use our tools. So we always love to hear from you. And with that, I just wanted to thank you once again for watching our stuff and being a part of Grayscale Gorilla. Couldn't do it without you and I really appreciate it. With that, have a good one. Bye everybody. All right, I was tired of Chris and Chad having all the cool lighting. And so I went out and I got the cool lighting, so let me know what you think. Am I cool yet?